Man, I'm telling you, Mike, the more that I just drool over this car right here, yeah. the more that it brings me back to my very first car. I had a 71 yeah. Camaro that me and my dad built up. It was wrecked. We had to put it on a frame straightener because it was all dented up. Built it out, got it to where it looked like this. It was blue and white. Had it for summer, then I sold it because uh, I wanted a four-wheel drive. I think I see some <laughs> drool on the fender over there. I know, there. right? I yeah. mean, it's right there. You know, the owner won't mess it. You know, he, he yeah. won't know. Well, this is a 73 Z28, and it is, it's a nice. It's, it's a sweet one. It's the real deal. It's not a tribute. Yeah, mine had the 396 we put in there with the M21 Ooh. transmission. It was it was a nice car. Nice. Well, let's talk about this Wolfgang kit, because this is two. what we're here to showcase. Yeah, day two of SEMA live show, or not SEMA, a new product showcase, and uh, as you can tell, Mike is back, I am back, we're refreshed, we slept through the night, well, I kind of did, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did, uh, so, and also I want to let you guys know, thank you all for tuning in yesterday, uh, huge numbers across all of our different videos that we did yesterday, and I know our vendors that were in studio absolutely loved it and enjoyed having you guys and taking the questions from questions. you. I mean, I thought there were some really good questions that came out yesterday. If you haven't seen those, go up on the playlist or on YouTube or on Facebook and you can see all the videos that we did yesterday. We have two more lives coming today. Two correct? more, yeah, yeah. three o'clock, five o'clock. Then we have three videos we're releasing tomorrow. Then we have three videos on fr Friday. We're just here in front of this camera all day long. Yeah. All right, so with that being said, what are we talking about today? Well, Wolfgang has a ceramic coating out, and the name is Ceramic Profi Coating, and Profi means professional in German, but you don't actually got to be a professional to get professional results with this kit because it just makes it so easy anybody can do it. The first time, in fact. And you know what's great is uh, we're giving away three of these at the end of this video. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a nice kit. The towels, the applicators, and the products. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna go back over there. As always, you know the drill. Questions, comments, in the comments down below. Like, share, tell your friend, and listen to Mike. <laughs> uh, well, tell you what, I thought the best way to do this would be just to kind of demonstrate a basic process for installing a coating. And I know that if, you, if you're new to coatings, there may be some mystery about this, but there's really nothing technical or nothing hard when it comes to installing a coating. In fact, uh, the word installing just means applying. It's, it's a word that is kind of specific to coatings. In the old days, we would apply a wax or apply a synthetic sealant. And now when we talk about putting the coating on, we just use the word installing kind of makes it sound a little more scientific or technical, but you're still just gonna wipe this product on, spread it around, and at some point give that paint a final buff. But let's step over here. Mike, I think that's called marketing. Marketing, yes. <laughs> uh, I probably got an article on that. Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna kind of walk you through a basic process uh, in order to prep the paint and then use the coating. And then we'll talk about the two maintenance products that come in this kit because after the coating is installed onto your car, then it's just a matter of taking care of it and keeping that high gloss shine up, keeping all the contaminants off the paint because the coating is really going to last a long time. In fact, I think the Profi's uh, advertised to last up to three years. That is correct. Now, you're going to, as we're going along with this, you're going to explain more about the individual products as you use them. Correct? Exactly. Okay. So, okay, so first thing, in most cases, you're going to wash your car and clay it, and that has already been done to this car. In fact, if I take and do the baggy test, it feels very slippery and very smooth. There's no contaminants on here. And so that's something that you wanna do for your own car. And the next thing you wanna do is you wanna kinda of take and determine the level of defects that you may have in the paint. So like the swirls or the scratches. And um, this is very low in swirls and scratches. Can you capture that at all? Uh, bring, let's see here, where are you? Uh, like right this, here? Uh, all right, bring the light back towards you. Okay. Keep going. Up. Keep going, keep going. No, uh, back towards the wall, sorry. Okay. Keep going. I'm in the red now, keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, I can start seeing some of it okay. there. So it's very very light swirls, it's very not light. bad. That, actually, that's kind of what you want. You actually don't want your car to have a lot of swirls and scratches. <laughs> that means you're gonna be there all day long. <laughs> yeah, and so this is the Wolfgang Total Swirl Mover. It's a medium cut polish. This stuff uses amazing abrasive technology. And here I've just got your basic polishing pad and your basic cordless polisher. 
So what you're doing is you're correcting, getting the paint fine. I'm gonna, yeah. This is this is something that you know you'd want to do to your own car before you put a coating on, and and uh, you know so. Putting a coating on is the easy part. Usually the prep work takes the longest, but even it's not that hard. And of course here at Auto Geek, we carry everything you need to do that. And we also offer all the education and the how-to information to help you do the job right, even if it is your first time. So let me just do a few quick passes here. Okay, so that's what they call paint correction. You're removing the below surface defects. And when it comes to the uh, Wolfgang Total Remover, this is a product that you would never let it dry. So after you do the paint correction step, just softly wipe that off. And that's, that looks beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and just check that with my swirl finder light and make sure the results I see. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect, and I don't know if, uh, let me see. Um, doing this camera work is really And <laughs> Take it back straight towards the wall, straight okay. towards the wall. Well, you're somewhat getting there. <laughs> I'm trying to get it here. That's where I did the work. All right, now bring it back towards the wall. Okay. Towards the wall. There towards, we go. There you go, now there we're we go. in there. Okay. There. There we okay, go. Okay, so flawless finish. All right. I kept trying to go up high. That's why that wasn't working. Yeah, no, okay. back and towards the wall. So now this is the unique step that is different from working with a traditional car wax or a synthetic sealant, and that's chemically stripping the paint. Because most compounds and polishes have lubricating oils to lubricate the surface as the abrasives do the abrading step, and that's where this kit comes into play because it's got this product called Perfect Finish paint prep. All right, hold that right there and let me get up close. All right, and that does what, Mike? What this is gonna do is gonna safely strip off or chemically strip all those polishing wells and that way the coating can make a proper bond to the paint. And that's really the key to getting the longevity and of course the protection out of a coating is you must get the coating to first bond to the paint. Now with the normal car wax or a synthetic sealant, you obviously skip this step. You can just go right to that uh, process of putting the wax on. But with this, you know, you, this is a key portion. I probably didn't open though, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Now this gives you a fresh base. I think that's what you kind of coined that It gives that you term. a surgically clean finish. And um, what I always like to do is I like to teach people to do a two-step wiping process. Okay, so I wiped that once, and if you notice, I put that product down fairly heavy, and that's just to make sure we dissolve all those polishing oils to get them off the paint. Then I'm gonna fold this to a dry side that I haven't used yet. And at this point, now I'm just gonna take and mist a little bit of product onto the towel. This is on the wrong setting, there we go. Okay, so just a light wipe, and I call this the insurance pass, so I'm just gonna insure that all those oils are removed. And again, this is kind of key because in order for that product to make a proper bond, you've got to have a very clean surface. Okay, so this towel is now done and I'm done with this product. Now at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and put the coating on. And that's really simple, but here's something you want to do. You always want to wear gloves when installing a coating. Uh, these products aren't dangerous. It's just a good idea not to get the chemicals onto your hands. And the good news is here at AutoGeek, we carry nitrile gloves in a variety of different shapes and sizes and different types. I guess you could say finally that we do carry hands in a rubber form. <laughs> we do sell okay. hands. So here is the Profi ceramic coating. And when you buy the kit, this comes with these microfiber applicator blocks. And, and these work so good for spreading the product out because the microfiber is soft and gentle to the paint. We just polished it, so the last thing we want to do is mar the paint. 
but it also helps in the application, the spreading of the coating to get a nice thin uniform layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and apply some to the face of this microfiber block. And you're not putting tons of product there. For my initial application, I need a little bit on there just so I have something to work with, but as I keep moving around the car, there's a few drops is more than okay. enough. Okay, so let me set this down. And then all you wanna do is really just a crosshatch pattern. Now, there's no magic to moving this in a crosshatch pattern, except it just guarantees that you have uniform coverage over every square millimeter of paint or centimeter of paint. And so this is the third time, and usually four is a good standard. And how big of an area are you working? You can, you wanna take your, that's a good question. You wanna take your larger panels and divide them up into smaller sections. And that's just so you can really manage that section, you know, adequately. So I'm gonna set this down and I wanna make sure that I set this down with the side I'm using up so it doesn't get contaminated. And then I wanna take and wait about 30 seconds and according to the clock on them all, 30 seconds to a minute. And then you wanna give this a final wipe. Now, as this is starting to cure and dry, do you, can you put the light on it? Maybe I can see it. We can try that. It's called flashing. And what flashing really means is... Oh, there you go. Up oh, There what, you go. Right there. I can see where you installed it. All right. Not really picking up the, the rainbow, but... Yeah, yeah. so what, what happens is when it starts to evaporate, they call that flashing. Kind of like when they use the word install, it means applying. So flashing means evaporate. The solvents are evaporating, leaving the, the, the solids behind, the actual nano ceramic coating, which is silicon dioxide. And you see this a rainbow effect. So you just, if you gotta kinda use your ambient light, look at it at an angle, I can see that it's starting to flash. Clean microfiber towel, and then just come down and give it the final buff. And you're not scrubbing on it. You're, no, you're going real really light. easy. But it's also important to know, and a lot of people leave this out when they, when they show how to do this, but wiping it with the towel is also a function of spreading it out to make sure you have that uniform layer of coating so you get uniform protection and uniform appearance. And then I'm gonna flip this to an unused side so it's nice, clean, and dry, and then give it a final wipe. And that's all there is to installing a professional grade ceramic cut into your car. It's really not that hard. The prep work is where you're gonna spend most of the time, but you would do that same prep work if you're gonna put a high quality carnauba wax like the Fusion or a synthetic sealant like the Wolfgang Deep Gloss Paint Sealant. You still gotta do the prep work before you put the uh, sealing agent on there. Um, so that's how you would go ahead and put the coating on. Now, of course, in the kit, now it comes with two maintenance products. Now, what these are for are to maintain that finish in between a normal wash job. And one of them is a spray detailer. Oops. So that is the Profi Ceramic Detail Spray. Oops. And I'm gonna demonstrate how to use this. Now, normally, normally you would not wanna get this surface wet for 24 hours, okay? So after you put the coating in, you need to leave the car in the garage. What do you want to? I want to show the bottle. You keep moving it around. Sorry, okay. people. All right, there you go. That's what it is. Okay. And um, I'm going to, Yancy, could you hand me another towel? I seem to be running out of towels. Yeah, and clean, if you towel. want, instead of putting it over the top of that coating, maybe show them down towards I the I could do that too, yeah. Down so towards the front. You want to leave that undisturbed for up to 24 hours. Yeah, you kind of demo down in here. Okay, so then to maintain it, uh, say you see some light dust, fingerprints, or smudges. This is the. This actually has the nano ceramic particles in it. Also, it's a detail spray, so it's for removing light fingerprints, dust, and smudges. And you just mist that on. Take a clean microfiber towel, spread it around, then flip to a dry side and give it that final buff. So you use it just like any other spray detailer. Only besides removing the fingerprints, smudges, and dust you've just laid down some more of that nano-sized particle of ceramic protection. And it leaves a very high gloss finish and also a nice slippery tactical feel to it. So that is to clean it. Now, once it's clean, this is another maintenance product only. This is called a booster. All right, hold it right there. Okay, so this is, this is not really a detailer. It's not so much intended to remove dust, fingerprints, and smudges. It's meant to lay down an extra layer of protection so you can maintain that coating finish. You would use it the same way though. I'll turn this. So just after you've got the car clean, you've either washed it and dried it, or you've used the detailer, then you would just mist some of this on like that. And uh, sometimes I like to put a little mist on my towel, 
then come down and spread that around. Same way you did the detailer, only this is not a detailer, it's a booster. And after you spread it, flip to the dry side, and then give that a final wipe. And by using the coating, the detailer, and the booster, you can maintain a show car finish with just those three products, and it's super easy to do. And that's kind of one of the things about the Wolfgang system here is it's, it's you know, you don't have to be a professional. Anybody can do this in their garage. And it's, it's affordable, and we're giving three kits away uh, in the giveaways. Yeah, now um, let's just go back to the, the all right, you, you installed the coating here. I'm a talking head from the nether. Let me bring me up. Um, basically, what I want to kind of get across a little bit is I know that we say that, you know, this coating is good for three years and so forth, but with using the, the detailer and the booster, that kind of guarantee, you know, helps you achieve that longevity of the coating, correct? Yeah, so once the coating is there, then what you want to do is take care of the coating. So um, a coating is not an invisible force field, which means you can then just run this through the automatic car wash. And so it's, it's really important that you, just, you now take care of the coating, but that's just normal things you normally do. So wash it, wash it like you normally would in, in between, you know, if it's a daily driver, this obviously is not a daily driver. I'd drive it daily. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would drive it daily too. And, and uh, we wanted to share a couple other cool products and, and I've written extensively and I share this in my classes, but here are two more products in the Wolfgang line to help you to wash the car. So, you know, at some point it's gonna get dirty, you gotta wash it. This is the Uber SIO2 coating wash. And this stuff here is actually, it's amazing. It's almost like a coating in it's, a bottle. <laughs> it's almost like a coating in a bottle. And, and what I do is usually, uh, so I will demonstrate this on a neglected car that doesn't have anything on it, and it will instantly, just after one use, start to make water beat up as it deposits the nanoceramic particles onto the paint finish, or actually the whole, the whole car. So not only would it bring back and start to protect neglected paint, but if you've got paint that you've already coated, it's a great way to maintain it. Um, this is a brand new product that we did just introduce. This is the Uber SIO2 rinseless wash. And what's cool about this is a lot of people don't have access to running water. So they're going to be able to take and uh, mix this up, dilute it correctly, and do a rinseless wash, a water swash. You could also turn it into a spray detailer, a clay lube, and even fortify your favorite car wash uh, by adding it to that car wash. So it's a multi purpose. <laughs> five products in one. So these aren't included in the kit. I just wanted to share them because washing is such a key part of maintaining any finish, no matter what you put on it. But once you go with the coating, not only do you get the 9H hardness, which resists future marring, but it's just going to outlast, you know, any traditional wax or sealant. So you got Anything that's going to last longer, obviously, is going to protect better because it's protecting longer. So you've got incredible gloss. You've got, you've got a self-cleaning effect. So anytime it rains, if your car is outside, because nothing wants to stick to the coating, it's going to rinse off to help keep the car cleaner. And when you do wash it, because the dirt doesn't want to stick to the paint, it's going to wash off easy. And because the water wants to get away, because it does create a super hydrophobic surface, water just wants to beat up. The water's going to want to get into your drying towel, or if you're blowing it off, it'll just fly right off the car. So there's all these really great benefits to a coating compared to a wax or a sealant, but there is that extra step of chemically stripping the paint before you put the coating on. Now, with your, you're talking about the, the coating and stuff and washing. Um, wouldn't the coating actually, you know, with if it being slippery and stuff, it'd make it where the dirt would release from the, the surface, so that yep. way it'd reduce the chances of you putting marring or, or scratches Yeah, that's in? one of the benefits of the coating is the, the self-cleaning effect. So uh, just pushing the mitt over, the dirt will tend to want to glide off versus to gouge in or scour the paint. So you can theoretically keep your car looking better longer, not only keeping it protected longer. Oh, look at that. There's two different things. There's protection and there's appearance. A lot of times people forget about one or the other. A lot of people get focused on protection, but you also want your car to look good, so. Well, I think that's the, the that's goal the of everybody. They just want their car to look good. Now, um, the, the washing, how, if, when you have a coated car, 
How often should you wash your car with the coating to keep it, the coating in as pristine? Well, frequent washing would be best because the idea is to keep all the contaminants off the car. So frequent washing depends on where you live and the kind of weather you're in. That could be as and often as- And how you as, use the car. Yeah, that could be often as once a week or once a month or every other month or so. It just depends on how you use the car. But the real key when you're washing the car is you've got to always make sure that your wash media is also clean and uncontaminated. You know, this, this is a microfiber chenille wash mitt. It's a very soft, a gentle mitt to a painted or a coated finish. But if it gets contaminated, then it's not the mitt that would cause marring, but the, the contaminants. So do simple things like this. Never let them touch the ground. Uh, you can throw this in a washing machine, wash it, and dry it. So, uh, but make sure your wash media is clean. And, you know, other things you can do is put a grit guard into the bottom of your bucket so any dirt particles sink below it so they don't get onto the mitt where you would cross-contaminate and cause the... Uh, marring to the paint yeah and uh what i also want to say is basically what you're trying to inform people is proper washing will help it keep your car shiny longer because once you start getting yep. sloppy on the washing it's all downhill from there you want me to demonstrate a good wash technique you can do whatever you okay. like. We so, have all the time. Well, we have an hour. <laughs> have whenever an hour. you're washing a car, normally uh, in my detailing classes, I always teach doing wheels and tires first. And after you've got the wheels and tires washed and rinsed off, then start at the top and work your way down. Now, when it comes to actually using a mitt to clean a car, the technique is really simple, but a lot of people don't use it. A lot of people, here's what I see. They, they gather up their soapy wash solution. They bring it over to the car. They've blasted all the loose stuff off and then because for a lot of people, washing the cars relaxing, and they just start rubbing the mitt over the paint like this. Oh, look at it, it feels so good. I'm washing my car. And what they don't understand is because you've got that coating on there, all you really need, needed to do is make one pass to agitate that dirt so it's loose enough to rinse off. If you take your mitt and you make that pass and keep making passes, now you've loosened the dirt and now you're scrubbing it into the paint. So here's the proper technique to washing a coated car. Take your wash mitt solution, bring it up, start at one end in the middle, run it from end to end, and as you're running it from end to end, work your way out. So you've basically made one pass over each section and at this point, you're ready to go to the other side, start in the middle and work your way out and then rinse the top or rinse the top and go to the other side. But what you don't want to do is just keep rubbing this mitt over the paint. That's where most of the swirls and scratches come from on most of the cars you see in your community or your world. That's because they love their well, paint. And if you think about it, like people would coat or wax or do something with their car once in a while. But most of us, the most common thing we do to our car is wash it. So that's why I'm always putting a lot of focus on the, the wash media, the wash solution that you're using, and good technique, good practices. You know, the coating is gonna be the foundation for your protection and your beauty, but taking care of the coating is always gonna come back to your detail spray, your booster, and your wash media and your wash solution. So and clean smartly, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> clean safely and clean smartly. Um, let's see, is there any other little tips? that we can go over. How well, about one thing one thing I would also recommend, and we should have done this, we should have brought out my dirty towel bucket because I always like to show this, but um, you, you because the coating is going to harden and crystallize, what you want to do is you want to mix up about three gallons of water into a five gallon bucket and go ahead and add an all-purpose cleaner or your microfiber detergent. And as you use a towel, uh, go ahead and dunk that into the bucket so it's exposed to the water, not to the air, and then immediately when you're done with the project, go and throw this, just pour the whole thing into the washing machine and wash everything and dry it. And that way you get the longest life out of your towels. And I always recommend, um, here you go. Trade ya. I always recommend uh, um, when you're done, what I do, my own personal practice is right over here, is I will take and clean this stainless steel table off so it's not dirty. And then I'll put my towels here. And as I fold them, I look at them and I feel them with my hands and inspect them to make sure they don't become contaminated. Your towels are basically tools. And these tools are the things that you're gonna end up touching the paint with. So I always tell people, if you take care of your towels, your towels will take care of your paint. That, well, yeah, that's true. Take care of your tools. You know, tools and, take care and, of you. and Nancy, probably the most common question I see about a coating, okay, is how long will it last? And the technical answer is how long it will last always depends on how it's touched. 
<laughs> after it's installed. It's so what you do to it, people. Touch it carefully. Wash it carefully. Use a quality detail spray. Use a quality booster to maintain that hydrophobic surface, and you're going to have a car that looks amazing all the time. All right. <laughs> Got any more little tips? Mm, I think that's about it. Um, another <coughs> one thing you can do that's important is keep that detail spray and perhaps take a couple towels and put them in like in a clean Ziploc bag. Keep them behind the seat or in the trunk. And if you ever get bug splatter or a bird dropping, try to get it off as fast as you can. Now the coating is going to be great protection against this, but still, you know, who knows what the bird's been eating. It's a good idea just to get that kind of stuff off as fast as you can, and a quality spray detailer is gonna help you to do that. Ooh, what the bird's been eating. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking of that because it happened to me this morning, so it came to my memory. Now, and uh, I do keep a detail spray in my car. You so. know what I, I usually always see too, is like when you go to, um, say you go to a car show or something like that, you know, the, you got these old people out there. I'm not saying anything about the old people or the young people. Um, car people. All right, let's put it that people, way. Yeah. Uh, they, they show up, they open their trunk, they have like a, uh, like a Lowe's or you know, like a little canvas detail or uh, toolbox. Yeah. They pull it out, they have their favorite detailer, they have their favorite spray wax and everything. Then they bring out the microfiber or the, the shop rag. Yeah. You see them. Oh. That thing's been rolling around in the back of their trunk. God yeah. only knows what's on the, on the carpet and everything. And it's like, oh, there, yeah. everyone just scratched it all. You're exactly right. Usually when I see someone open the trunk or we've got a car down here and I look behind the seat, there's some cheap microfiber towels and they're all contaminated with dead leaves, dried up leaves, <laughs> sticks, bugs, just scratchy looking stuff. And I guess these people don't ever think about if they take that and rub that over the paint, that's where your swirls and scratches come from. So make sure everything that touches that paint is clean and soft. The ceramic coating will do its job. Your job is just to make sure everything that touches that coating you know, it's, it's in good shape. All right, and with that being said, let's go time for viewer questions. You ask, and today, Mr. Mike Phillips answers. All right, so let's go back into here. Bring me back up, and we do have some good questions. I seen them coming in, people, I wasn't ignoring you over here, um, but what do you call it, just, we had a little stuff that we needed to get through. Uh, Mike's Auto Detailing, good morning. Good morning back to you. Uh, we got Jose. He's saying hi from Mexico. Then we have Robert. What's going on, Mike and Yancey? Uh, I like this one, Sarah. Uh, love Wolfgang, especially the swirl remover. Really good stuff. Good product. Good product. Uh, Uber all-in-one. That's another one. It, it's a it's a great one-step you know cleaner. I think it's a got a seal instead of a wax. Yeah, it's an all-in-one. AIO. Then we have Austin Pinkerton. I answered you in the questions, but just in case somebody else is reading this, how do we enter for the giveaway? I'll be giving you the hashtag here in just a little bit that you're going to have to put back down in the comments. Then we'll pick the winner from there. And, and Yancy, does the giveaway come with the towels too? Yep. Oh, so it's everything yep. right here. Right there. Yep. You might you know, The washes, that's something separate. I'm only giving away the coating kit. This is af actually out of my inventory for my car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mario, if I can read your little itty bitty flag, I do believe that's Puerto Rico. Uh, we got Michael O'Neill, he's back again. Man, you're putting in the hours with us, Michael. Uh, he's from Montreal, he says hi to us. Hey. Uh, here's actually a really good question. Mike's auto detailing, how does that compare to IPA? I'm pretty sure he's talking about the prep. You know, um, one of the things that IPA is not a good lubricant in and of itself. And I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people ask that question and I know anybody can go to any local drugstore and you can usually find IPA in 50%, 70% or 90% strengths. And first of all, if you use it at full strength, if you leave that on a clear coat finish for too long, it will actually dissolve and bubble up the paint. So you, it's too hot, it's called a hot solvent when it's like that. So you don't want to use 90% uh, IPA. You don't even want to use 70%. Uh, 50% is even too strong. But the thing about why you don't want to use those things anyway is because they're not a good lubricant. And this is kind of a bad analogy, but this is one I use. You wouldn't go out to your car, drain the motor oil out, and put in IPA and turn that motor on because you'd spin a berry. <laughs> it's not a good lubricant. And let me tie that in. Clear coats are scratch sensitive, okay? So they're scratch sensitive and they scratch easy. And so using things that are not good lubricants on paint that you just polished that is not a good lubricant is a recipe for 
marring the paint. And my definition of marring is it's the kind, fluffy way to describe the word scratching. So the delicate way. <laughs> so yeah, so instead of using IPA and trying to be your, become your own chemist and dilute it, use something that a manufacturer has taken the time to invest in a real chemist and has created a product that will remove the polishing oils but also will not scratch at the same time. Yeah, they, Plus they, it smells good. They, they developed it. So. It smells like bubble gum, if I remember correctly. Bubble gum? Well, you just sprayed it. I know, but I didn't <laughs> smell it and I spraying it. Let's see. Uh, you're fine. Uh, oh, I'm going to smell it now. <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> Yep, that smells like bubble gum, so it makes it a little bit more fun to use. And no people, I don't have the smell of vision involved. Um, all right, let's go to Austin. I see some people use suede applicator and some micro microfiber applicators as shown here. Why is that? What's the difference? Uh, at some point it can be personal preference, but here's the deal. The little foam blocks like this, you don't have to try to hold the microfiber patch of cloth around it. Uh, it, it, it's just really fast and easy. But also, if you ask me, this my, this this very low uh, plush Here, let me get pile. Up on that. Uh, it's got a very low. It's a it's a short nap, is what they call it. The nap, the the pile length, the fiber length is very low, but it is present and it it makes it glide over the paint real easy. Um, it helps you to spread the product out. It actually is easier to use than a flat microfiber. Uh, suede cloth wrapped around a foam rubber block. Uh, but both systems work. I mean, most everybody uses the suede blocks. I tend to like this better. Personal preference? Personal preference, you know, and, and the way these are made, and we sell a ton of these at AutoGeek, but there's a seam on one side, so you can't really use that side, but you can use this side, this side, and that side. So you get three sides out of it. So as soon as you're done, you, you know, you can either switch to a new side as you're working around the car, say you see some contaminant on there you picked up by accident, or I throw them in the wash machine, wash them, dry them, and then I still got, you know, after I've used one side, the, the face of it, I got the sides too. So I get three uses out of them. You know what, that, I don't know how, what you just said sparked me on this. Um, that coating, how does it make your paint feel? Um, I, it's been a while since I used this particular one, so I'd have to go over there and feel it in about 12 hours to tell you. Okay, I can't. I, yeah, I couldn't remember if it was if it was you know the smooth or if it was the. There's so here. many coatings on the market that I'm always uh, <laughs> rotating through them, and a lot of times when I detail a car, uh, it leaves and I don't see it again. So that's one <laughs> Bye -bye. of the things that's the downside of detailing cars is, unless they bring it back for maintenance, you just don't see it again. You have to cross your fingers that they're taking care of it. All right. Um, cue the semi outside. Yeah, the backup <laughs> beacon or backup siren there. All right, let's go, Michael. Uh, what's your opinion of people who put on more than one application of ceramic coat in less than 12 hours? Well, that's a good question, but you really what you got to do is read the directions. Okay, so every coating out there is a little bit different. Now, some coatings they want you to apply that within a window of a time that's much shorter because. In order for yeah, in order for the coating to actually make a proper bond, uh, there's some there's some attachment and some some bonding that's going to take place there. And some coatings, if it's completely set up and dry, the next coat may not bond properly. So you, in some coatings, you actually want to still kind of a little wet and tacky, so the next coat can actually kind of melt into it. But the manufacturer will know that, and they'll put that in the directions. That's why if one manufacturer says, wait 45 minutes to an hour, then put the second coat on, you really want to stick to that. If they say, wait 12 hours or 24 hours, come back, put the second coating on, then that's how their chemis chemical system works. So. Um, as a person that used to write label copy for car care products, whenever I wrote label copy for a new product, I didn't just think it up out of my, on my own. I made an appointment with the chemist, the guy that made the chemical, and asked him what should the directions read on the label. Now, if we assume all reputable car chemical companies do that, then that's the reason you go back to the directions and follow them instead of trying to make it up or copy the directions from another product because the chemistry may be different. Yeah. Makes sense? Makes total good sense. Yeah. Uh, let's go here, Mike's Auto Detailing. What's the difference between, boost, between the booster and detailer? Great question. Well, the detailer is for cleaning, but it leaves some protection behind. So it's to remove fingerprints, smudges, and dust. So there's going to be more lubrication in it plus the protection. The booster is just a light spray of pure protection. So you really want to make sure you use the booster on a clean surface. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same difference between a spray detailer, a conventional spray detailer, and a spray wax. 
A spray wax is not supposed to be used to remove dust, okay? Because there's no <laughs> lubricant in it for liquefying and removing the dust. So if you're get, in the conventional system, if you want to use a spray wax, you'd either wash and dry the car, or you'd use the spray detail to remove light dust, fingerprints, and smudges, then use the spray wax. Same philosophy here. Okay. So one is for light cleaning, leaves some protection. One is for a clean car, leaves more protection. Okay. And that's why it's in the kit. It's just a, it's something for no matter what your car looks like. And, and spray detailers are really not for cars that are four-wheel drive, caked on mud <laughs> dirty. Wait, they, they're yeah. not gonna get off from me going to the mud bogs? <laughs> no, I have to spray it, aren't it? Spray detailers, up. remember these three things, light dust, fingerprints, smudges. You know, there's a video idea for us. We need to find somebody with uh, a lifted truck, big old swampers on there, and we coat it. Then we take it out, coat one half the truck with the coating, and the other half we just leave it plain. Mm -hmm. And we see how much easier the mud comes off and how much actually sticks yeah. while they're going through the mud. Because that would actually be kind of interesting. It would be fun to get the truck muddy. Uh, uh, yeah. It ain't going to be my truck. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna, <laughs> well, you don't have a truck, so. But I know uh, um, Bruno, mm -hmm. Bruno Massel, he uses coatings on his car to keep the rubber from sticking from his burnouts. He's our drag racer that we have. Uh, hi, Bruno, if you're watching this. Uh, he actually puts the coating on uh, back behind his rear wheels to sure. keep, keep the rubber from yeah. sticking. So. Well, let's hook up with Matt Still and one of his buddies. Matt, you watching? He's got a mud bogger. Yeah, no doubt. Actually, you know what? That, that's the last time idea. I had a monster truck and I took it out, I avoided the mud because I just waxed it. it well, I remember. All, I was there with there, you. Yeah. I was with you. It was all pretty. I didn't want to get it dirty. It took me all day to get him to go at least around everything. <laughs> and yeah. I drove through like one mud puddle. One mud puddle. Then he cried the entire way home. Uh, no, just joking. Um, all right, let's go over to here. Lomas, what would be a good backup microfiber towel to remove the coating if you ran out of low pile once? Thanks for the videos. Thanks for watching. Well, and uh, that's a good question, but uh, here's, here's instead be more proactive. And one of the things, you know, if you followed any of my writings or videos is I always stress having plenty of towels. In fact, I would say most people that want to get into coatings probably should before they start take inventory of how many towels they have. And to do the job right, and that means to wash the car, dry the car, clay the car. When you clay the car, if you're doing it after the wash and drying process, you're going to be using towels to wipe the clay lube off. If you polish the car, you're going to be using towels to wipe the polish off. When you chemically strip it, you're going to be using towels to wipe the panel wipe off. And then when you coat it, you're going to be doing the final buff. That's a lot of towels. And you know, a good safe bet would be four dozen. I mean, I mean, two <laughs> no, no. dozen, two dozen maybe you could skimp by. But that would be the, on the low end. The high end would be, you know, three to four dozen. So, you know, next time you see a sale going on at um, AutoGeek, stock up on towels, dedicate them for different procedures, and then keep them clean. You know, have a dirty towel bucket like I have. They go from whatever you're doing to the bucket, which is clean, to the washer, to the dryer, to a clean place to fold them, inspect them, and then store them someplace clean. It really, everything always starts with how clean your towels are. But, you know, any microfiber towel will work. Long nap, short nap, uh, just make sure you inspect it, make sure it's clean. I, I'd say sometimes some of the longer nap, you know, plush ones, they feel good, they look cool, but sometimes they leave lint behind. So that's why yeah. I'm kind of a big fan <laughs> of the low, the what I call a flat weave or low pile microfiber towel. Plus they're faster and easier to inspect and you can visually tell if they're contaminated easier than a long pile or fluffy weave towel. And, and the great thing too that I do, and I'm pretty sure that you do it too, I th actually I probably got it from you, um, is I color code my towels. Yeah. I have a certain color for wiping wax, a certain color for coatings, I have a certain color for glass, certain yeah. color for tires. You know, so I mean, that makes it easy. That way you know, all right, that's my coating towel, that's my wax well, towel. Over in the cabinets there, I really, I have different colors of flat weave towels, but they're all what I call my paint care towels. So they may be different colors, but they're all the same type of towel, and they're only for paint care. They're not supposed to be used to wipe tire dressing off, clean engine compartments, door jams, things uh, like that. Then don't look in the dirty fiber fiber yeah. towel thing. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. No, my coworkers use my paint care towels for the wrong things all the time. And that's why you see that pile over there by the door of throwaways. Andre, that's you. Andre. We know it's you. All right, let's go here. Chad St. John may have miss, missed it. Is the Profi a dual layer application? Um, you can apply a second layer. I'd have to um, read the directions to see what the exact time is. Maybe you can look that up because it's important to follow the directions. I didn't do that before the video. And actually here is a very good com uh, commercial. <laughs> uh, here's a very good comment. 
Uh, hi guys, can you use iron remover, et cetera, with coatings? You know, you can, and that's a common question, and most coating manufacturers say that you can use iron removers and other chemicals to clean them because, you know, they're going to get contaminated if they're a daily driver, but um, uh, you want to use them sparingly because here's how I always put things. I put things in extremes, okay? So once you got your car coated, and I'm going to go deep here on you. Once you got your car coated. I need a sound effect for that every time you say that. If you're going to spray an iron remover onto it to dissolve any iron contamination, ask yourself this question. Will the iron remover add more coating? Well, that's ridiculous. It's not going to add more. So then what's the opposite of the word add? Remove. Remove, okay? So put things in extremes. And that is a good question, but if you've got a daily driver and it's and you live in an area where there's a lot of iron content in the city water that you're using to wash your car, or there's a lot of fallout, industrial fallout that gets on the car, then when the rain hits it, it's being contaminated that way. Because there's only so many ways you can get iron contamination on your car. And um, uh, if you live in that area, then you know, frequent washing, it goes, this goes back to frequent washing. Frequent washing is going to be a friend to keep that stuff off, you know. Okay. But I always put things in extremes. I've, you know, I've been answering questions now, to tell you the truth, professionally since 1994. My first how-to article was, was, uh, is on the web today, and the date I wrote that is 1994. That's a long time to be writing how-to information and answering questions. And I get a lot of questions. They're great questions, but sometimes I just like to put things in extremes to help everybody wrap their brain around what's actually taking place. My extreme. So I'm not going to say that an iron remover is going to remove this coating or any brand of coating, but if we put things in extremes, is it going to add more? No. So what's the opposite of the word add? It's, it's not going to add any. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you know, micro marring, you know, micro braiding, chemically dissolving. But I would say, no, this is a really stout, this is a three-year coating and it's, it is stout. If, 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 here's something about this coating. I, we forgot to mention this. It's really important that you get any high spots off. If you don't get the high spots off, I'll guarantee you, you're going to have to polish them off. You might even have to compound them off. It's that tough. Yes. Um, but also, going back to the iron remover, you know, just use this. If you are going to use it, use it properly. Don't let it dry. Don't use it in straight yeah, hot, in hot heat, in direct sun. Yeah. You know, just do it and get it and, done. I and mean, something you also could do is just use it on one panel and see if you see the color changing effect. If you don't, then you probably don't I mean, need to use it on the rest of yeah. the car. Uh, Another thing you could also do if you really want to be safe is wash the car to remove all the loose dirt, which there could be some iron contamination that's loose, and then spray the iron remover on, and you may see nothing at all. Okay. So. All right, so let's go here. Let's go to George. That's a good question. That's a deep question. <laughs> it's a deep one. After, after it is harmful or beneficial to apply a non-ceramic product, uh, I example, bead maker, carnival wax, or sealant, over the ceramic coating as a sacrificial layer? They want to know about layering. You know, that's, that is a good question. It's also a really common question. In fact, I wrote an article about that. I can't think of the topic right now. Um, I think the topic, the title is, um, can I apply a wax over a coating? But people ask this all the time, but here's the deal. When you put something over the coating, you're going to get the benefits of the thing you put on the coating, not the benefits of the coating. And the reason most people use the coating is because there's more benefits of the coating than there is the thing that they're putting the on hydro, top of it. The hydrophobic properties. Hydrophobic self-cleaning, yeah. super gloss, super shine, better protection. And uh, But see, he added the word sacrificial barrier. So yeah. now that kind of throws a little wrench into the mix there. He knows he's going to be getting that. He knows he wants... I know the answer to this. So <laughs> uh, if you're going to add it as a sacrificial barrier to protect the coating, yeah, you can do that, but you're, you're going to lose the benefits of this and get the benefits of the thing you put on there. And sooner or later, it's going to sacrifice itself, and now you're back to the coating again. What's better is going back to keep your wash media clean and uncontaminated, find a good car wash, wash it intelligently, dry it, take care of your wash media. So every time you touch that paint, you reduce the potential to mar it, and then you protect the coating. The coating protects the paint. The car looks good. And you're happy. And then you're happy. <laughs> All right, let's go here. Uh, 13 PCBS. Hi, Mike. Gentle baby wipes in the car for bird bombs. Safe for the little run. Safe for the paint. Hey, that's a great idea. I never even thought about that. That actually all comes sealed and yeah, sealed. Yeah, no, that would work. It's safe. Safe enough for your skin. Safe enough for uh, your paint. Uh, let's go. Night Auto PCD. Hello from 20MW of Cleveland. I don't know what 20 MW means, but hello. <laughs> um, cue the truck outside. Javier, do you rec recommend infrared lamps for ceramic coating curing? 
Uh, you know what the infrared is going to do? It's going to heat the surface up, and it's going to make it to the, the solvents to flash out. It's going to dry. It's going to harden. If you want to speed dry so you can put that car back on the surface, you bet. Go for it. So I think some coatings out there, actually, that's a part of their curing process for a quicker, faster, harder uh, uh, coating on the surface. But follow the manufacturer's directions. That's where This one does not state that you have to use it, but you could if you wanted to. Okay. Now... You, you, you know, you, it's the same thing you could also... Uh, pull the car out in the sun, of course, then it would get dusty and dirty. So it's, but it's, it's warming it up. Okay, let's go here. This is kind of a two-part um, question from Jeff McCartney. Uh, la, 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 let's get it up. Can you demonstrate the water beating or sheeting capabilities of the Profi and Ceramic Booster? We just applied the coating, so we really can't do that. Uh, but his second is, are the two products I mentioned above more of a sheeter or a beater? That means does it sheet the water or does it beat up? That's What's be the beating. contact handle of them? Yeah, I've got an IK sprayer up there. I'm, uh, you know, I think Yancey's point was is you're not supposed to get the coating wet, but that's kind of real world. This is just demonstrating. I'll guarantee that water's going to beat up like crazy, even though it's only been 15 minutes since we put it on. No, it's been longer than but, 15 But minutes. we don't want to confuse anybody and think them, have them think that, hey, look, after you put the coating on, you're supposed to get it wet. Yeah. Because no. some people aren't the sharpest They take us the literally. <laughs> yeah, take us literally. He did it on YouTube. But when you get a chance, go get the IK. We'll spray it up. We'll throw some water on there. Okay. Um, I, I love a challenge, you know? <laughs> I love a challenge. All right. So. I, I started out teaching uh, detailing classes for dealerships, body shops, and detail shops. And uh, that was some of the best training I ever had, you know, so I'm never afraid of any question on any topic, and I don't care if people try to stump me, because uh, first of all, if I don't have the answer, I'll be honest and tell you, but usually um, I can put things into a real-world scenario, pull out all the hypothetical waste-your-time stuff, and get you an answer that'll actually be real and help you. Oh, sure, okay, so love this thing. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to walk over here and throw right. some water on here. And this is just city water with all its contaminants. This is the section I coated. All this up here, this had the detailer, this had the booster spray. So, uh, let's going? see. Sometimes it works best to let it go into the air and fall like rain. Yeah. And don't get yourself. It's getting me. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's good. Oh no, let's get up here. And... Oh, you got down there. All right. All right. There's the beating. That was the booster. This area right here was the detailer. And that area right there. No matter. Oh, wow, those are tight. Yeah, um, nice, but, tight, tall, and small. Yeah, no, those, oh, wow. Uh, looks like little diamonds. Do you see the TV there, Mike? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was the coating. I just don't want anybody to think this is mock-up. That was the real deal there. Yeah, but now remember, um, this is us showing you. I mean, look at that, the beading off that topper, though. It's just <laughs> falling off. It's just, yeah, yeah, this stuff really works. Works good. Now, the thing is, remember, if you do this coating on yourself, you want to uh, make sure that you allow it to properly cure. Yeah, let it completely dry. Don't get the car wet. The, the key is undisturbed. You do not want anything disturbing, anything touching it, whether it's water or your hand. You know, some people do this. They, they, they wax their car, they coat, whatever they do, and then they go, oh, God, that looks good. They just keep wiping it. What they don't know is their <laughs> microfibers excel at removing. Yeah. And so what you want to do is back away from the car, <laughs> let the voodoo juice that's in the products you're using do their magic, and quit disturbing it. <laughs> let it be, people. Let it be. <laughs> uh, I think all that information is in both my original how-to book and my second how-to book, by the way. Do not disturb the... The, the, the thing you're using to seal the paint with. There's waxes, there's sealants, and now there's coatings. Okay, let's go here. We got a few more questions. Okay. Uh, Michael. Let's go back to Michael. Talk a little bit more about the waterless product. Is it like a soap that you can put in your bucket with water or a spray bottle with water for cleaning this is actually, um This is actually, you know, um, Andre did all the uh, beta testing on this, and then he brings it to me and asks me to test it. So let me just tell you what I did. 
Uh, my neighbors, they sometimes watch these videos, sorry, uh, Bob and Helen, uh, they're not car people. <laughs> uh, they look at their car as a means of transportation. Uh, they bought a 2019 Toyota RAV4. Um, to my knowledge, they've never done anything. They've never waxed it, they've never used a spray detour, nothing. It's probably been run through the car wash to get it clean a couple times since they bought it new. It sits underneath a uh, garage canopy um, or a carport. So um, I asked them if I could borrow it. Um, actually, uh, they were in Wyoming and the battery was going dead. So I, Wyoming. I drove it for them just to charge the battery because it's a, it's a hybrid. So that's the safest way to charge the battery, just drive the car. So I just drove it. And then this product came out and I thought, okay, well, I'll give it a try. It's not the best color white. Uh, but I took pictures for my review and after it rained and the water's just laying flat and it's all coagulated. There's zero beating going on. So I bring it down here. I mix this up as a waterless wash. It's a one ounce to two gallons. I think I had about two ounces of this and three and a half gallons of water if you want to get all chemistry there. And then I, I just did a normal rinseless wash on it and dried it off. And then took it home that night. That night it rained. I come out and took pictures showing the amazing water beating. Before zero, now split it, and all I did was use this product. Uh, it's still beating today, and th th they've done nothing to the car. So that's how I've used it. I have not used it yet as a clay lube, a spray detailer, a booster, or a booster for a car wash, or... Um, so you I'll, haven't used it for any other purpose? I've only used it as a rinseless <laughs> wash, you know, because you know, I'm a busy guy too. I got things to do. We don't, we're not guy. a car wash down here, actually. Um, but the idea being is this is like a, forta, a ceramic fortifier. So you, the, the, they state you can add this to your favorite car wash. Now, if your favorite car wash already is a product with an SiO2, it would be kind of redundant to add it to this. But say you're just using a popular car wash on the market, it says on the label you can add it, and it'll create that water beating effect on your paint as you Palm use olive. it. Palmolive. So, what's that? Palmolive. Your favorite car wash is palm olive, then uh, go for it. <laughs> just joking, just joking. Dish soap, bad. Uh, this one, actually, we got a couple people. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me bring up Night Auto PCD. Forgot, it was 20 miles west of Cleveland. My bad, is it 5 p.m. yet? Uh, <laughs> needs to be. It, uh, let's go right here. These kind of go together. Um, so we had two people, great minds think alike. We have Michael. Uh, actually, let's start with Gary. Gary, can you explain a high spot, please? Hold that thought for a second, Mike. Then, Michael, in what's your advice on removing high spots? So those will be the last two. Um, hey, Reed, nice to see you. Uh, before we end this up, so great high questions. spots. Let's yeah, go questions. ahead and talk about them. Okay, so uh, let me. Do, uh, I wrote this article that talks about coding terminology because to me, I thought this was all just a big joke. If if, I, if someone would put me in charge, I wouldn't have done all this stuff. But once the Genie's out of the bottle, it's hard to put it back in. So a high spot is in the old days when you had a car wax and you left too much wax on, it was a smear. Hey, I see a wax smear. All it meant is you just didn't get all the wax off. You take a towel and you wipe it off. Well, a high spot is just excess coating you didn't wipe off. That's what they call a high spot. Think of it as a smear or excess product. So there's nothing magic about it. It's just too much product. And the problem is with the coating is once it dries and solidifies, a good analogy is it's kind of like super glue. I mean, once it dries, it ain't gonna, in some cases, it's not gonna wipe off. So now you've got to try to remove it in a mechanical means. So the way you'd wanna try to remove it is if you could, use a light polish. If a light polish doesn't work, use a medium cut polish. When I started this video, I used the Wolfgang Total Swirl Remover. That's a medium cut polish. If that didn't work, then I could get a compound. Okay, so you, you, you wanna try to use the least aggressive method to get it off, but at some point you might actually have to get to a compound. Um, you can also try this. You can take, if this hasn't been too long, you can take the product, uh, put some onto your applicator pad and re-wet that area and try to re-liquify. Sometimes the solvents used for the coating will, are strong enough to dissolve. It's called like dissolves like. like, okay? But, and sometimes you get lucky and that works. If it doesn't work, then you're back to a polish or a compound to get it off. So, um, but the, the, the real thing you want to do is you don't want to leave any high spots in the first place. Can you walk over and grab that Swirl Fender light? So, one time we sold a coating here, customer bought it, and if you think about this, where, where are the lights in most people's garages? It's the garage door opener, one yep. light. Probably has two bulbs in there, one of them's burnt so, out. Now this is a true story. So this guy had a black Tahoe. He bought a coating from Autogeek, read all the directions, spent the whole day washing, clean, 
doing the paint correction, chemically stripping, putting the coating on. So if he spent the whole day, it's dark out. He's got one light in his garage. He's probably looking at the hood because the Tahoe is mostly vertical sides, a hood and a roof. There's nothing horizontal on the back. It's an SUV. Uh, so he says he's looking at it, so he's looking at the hood, and he says it looked good. So he closed the garage door, went to bed, brings the Tahoe out of the garage the next day into the sun and saw high spots everywhere on the sides and then called us customer care hey what do I do and we told them the things I just told you you probably have to polish it off not a happy customer so I wrote an article here's the title if you're going to install coatings you need a great handheld light so you can go up and down the side of the car and inspect your work and while you still have that window of time to remove that high spot you can get it off because you can see it. If you can't see it, you're going to miss it, and it's not going to be until this gentleman, you get it out into the good sunlight, you're going to see it, and now it's going to be too late. So, Oops moment. <laughs> so try. So first, get a good handheld light. Uh, second, try to dissolve it with the coating that you're using if it hasn't been too long of a time. So and you want to work a really off. small area, too. You don't want to make a big yeah. physics. Yeah, and then, and then if that didn't work, then you're back to polishing. But that kind of goes back to what we said in the beginning. You take your larger panels, like the hood, and divide it up into smaller sections, like four quadrants. Apply to one section, give it the final buff, flip your towel to the dry side, give it another final buff, and then look at it. Look at it. Use the ambient light. Look at it. Make sure there's no high spots. Go to a new section, and always be inspecting your work. And if you've got a buddy, I always talk about the buddy system, mm -hmm. have a buddy come inspect your work for you. So they got a fresh set of eyes. They're looking at it differently and that way you can ensure that there's no high spots. And uh, take it from me, I have left high spots on cars and I've had to come back and compound them off. It's, you can do it, but it's just no fun. It's better to not leave them in the first place. And this is about a good representation of a, a, a little bit bigger, little bit bigger but yeah. this is what, 16 by 16? 16 by 16. I'd go 24 by 20. Two foot by two foot is a pretty good manageable size. But uh, the problem with some coatings, you know, and I'm not going to speak to all coatings, is some of them the flash time is very short, and if you wait too long, you start to wipe it off, and it's not going to want to come off. It's sticky. So mm -hmm. uh, always read the directions and read what the manufacturer says for a flash time. Pay attention to it. And also things like the ambient air temperature, uh, humidity. the humidity and wind. You know, if, if, if you've got a liquid on a surface and it's windy, it'll dry faster than if there's no wind. So those three things can affect how fast or how slow a, a, a coating will flash or evaporate. All right. So what's our high spot again? <laughs> just, just joking. Uh, <laughs> just joking. I want to thank you all for tuning in. That will be it. But now let's get to the giveaway time. Oh, yeah. All right. We can't forget about the giveaway, you know. So you will get six of these blue towels. Okay. Here, I brought this for you. And I don't know how you did it, but you got water all the way from there over to here. I, IK sprayer, good sprayer. <laughs> I know, Gets right? water everywhere. It does. So you will get six of these towels. All right, and these are 16 by 16 flat weave towels. 16 ounce bottles. 16 ounce bottles of the paint prep, the Profi Ceramic Detail Spray, and the booster. And the booster. You'll get two of these applicators and one bottle of the Profi uh, ceramic, ceramic coating. coating. So now, three lucky winners will that get... That has to be around 200 bucks or more. It, it's, 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 it's up there. Is this like 100 bucks right here? Yeah, no, I... Um, Megan, she she let, opened it up and she's like, we're going to give them some good stuff. So that's straight to you guys. So three people will win this. What I need you to do, what we came up with, hashtag Profi, right? Yep, hashtag Profi. Hashtag Profi, P-R-O-F-I. Um, <coughs> and me. you put that down in the comments, both on Facebook and in YouTube. And on Friday, I'm going to be going through all the hashtags and we're going to find the way. <laughs> My Friday, and I still got to oh, shoot video so too on Friday. I'm so glad it's you, not me. So, yeah, it's gonna, it may be late Friday, but. Um, Let's make we, Andre do it. Squirrel, <laughs> we got a job <laughs> for you. Uh, so, what do you call it? I'll go through and I'll be pulling them up. If I don't get the question, I mean, don't get the uh, contest announced right on Friday, trust me, I'm doing my best to get it all done. We do have three videos that we are doing. I just remembered that. I should put it on Monday, but I said Friday on the other one, so I got to stick with it. Yep. So, this could be. All yours, so hashtag Profi in the comments. Other than that, we are back at 1 o'clock, so we got to clean up the rain mess here. We're back, I do <laughs> believe, with Sonax, I do believe, is who we're coming Sonax, back with. Yep. And after that, we have uh, 303. Yep. Oh, graphene. Graphene. We'll be talking a little bit of graphene. We'll be talking to the head, the head chemist at 303 David. about their new graphene spray. Yeah, so stay right here. 
Actually, you might want to go get something to eat and then come back in an hour. So we'll see you in just a little bit. Yep. And Mike, what do we say? Uh, thanks for tuning in. And I say thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.